When I received this radio, I went about immediately recording my first impressions and also the steps I took in its restoration. Unfortunately, there were numerous problems and this radio was taking a lot of my time. So therefore, I decided to keep it aside and take a look at it with a fresh mind. And it's been lying there for the last uh, almost eight months. But I have restored it now and I decided to post this video, which is part one of the full restoration video. I'll be posting part two of the restoration very shortly. You're looking at the uh, Panasonic uh, 8 band model number RF2200. And uh, this radio, which I've received, is in, is in a very good condition, at least on the face of it. But then as you look closer, you'll find that many of these switches, uh, you know, they're still sticky. And they're not very freely able to move. And this one, of course, the volume is stuck. The vernier tuning is pretty okay. You can tune it fast, you can tune it slow. And uh, uh, the other controls, this one is also stuck. The bass control here, the treble is again stuck. This one is functioning. Uh, the band change switches, uh, the FM shortwave and the AM band change switches and the uh, other uh, the the shortwave one two three four five six shortwave band switch is functioning now this one is actually broken and uh, uh, the antenna is also broken that's uh, that's sad you know because antenna really adds to the beauty of the radio the original one now this radio has been serviced by some gentleman and uh, all the screws here are missing. All the screws. The radio of course is made in Japan. A beautiful looking radio. And you have the battery compartment. There is one screw over here which I'm going to open and see how it looks from the inside. And I have my doubts because uh, certainly it doesn't appear to be very uh, in good shape. Uh, a lot of work possibly to be done on this radio. So I'll be sharing all this in my videos on this particular. Uh, as you can see, oh, it's fairly dirty. And uh, a lot of dust accumulation inside. And you find that this obviously is a positive negative lead. Somebody has detached it from, uh, from the battery. And then you have an antenna lead over here, possibly a ground lead. So all these leads have been detached. And um, there's another one over here. This wire appears to have been cut. I don't know for what reason. So we'll have to go into this. As I mentioned, it's a horrible looking piece, at least from inside. There appears to be an IC here. There's an IC here. This must be the output IC. It looks like an output transformer. I don't know, maybe for the earphone or whatever. There's an output transformer here. There's an IC again connected with the output. And uh, there's an IC over here, uh, maybe some kind of a RF uh, you know, IC and uh, this one is definitely an RF IC and there are loads of transistors.
Well, I removed all the knobs uh, from the front. They were pretty easy to take out. You know, just sort of pull them out. And then, uh, surprisingly, good feature about this video is that you know the front cover simply comes off, and there it is. So. Uh, let's hope that it's easy to service. I can see there have been some solder marks earlier. So it has been serviced, there's no doubt about that. And it looks as if a transformer has been replaced because this is not the original one. And uh, so this has been replaced. And uh, some more, you know, uh, signs of it being serviced are quite visible here very dirty so what I'll do is I'm going to clean it all up first and uh, and then let's see I have been cleaning the trying to clean the dial it was full of grime and dirt and whatnot it's very easy to remove there's a little latch over here and this can be easily removed and uh, there's a dial lamp over here there's a dial lamp inside so basically there are two dial lamps taking about 40 milliampers each so i've cleaned this and i've been uh, able to clean this also with isopropyl and it's fairly good so i'm going to fit this back there So the radio by itself um, uh, functions, however, the FM reception is pretty clear, but the AM reception is still not confirmed. I haven't really checked it out thoroughly. But what really happens is that, you know, um, after some time, some distortion tends to develop in the radio. I mean, the IC, probably the output IC. This is the output IC, it's um, HA1329. It gets heated up and some distortion in the audio uh, comes about after about five, seven minutes or so. But input to the IC is through obviously a coupling capacitor. And I've checked at that point, there is no distortion prior to that. The distortion is happening only subsequent, that is when the IC. So I've taken out this IC. And uh, there are a lot of uh, dry solder points in this. And um, so I had to clean all the uh, legs of this IC once again. And I'll try to refit it and see if there is any change whatsoever or maybe there is a, you know, the IC itself is damaged. So that's where we are at the moment. I've also recapped um, the capacitors which were immediately connected to this IC. IC gets fitted over here. And and uh, subsequently this heat sink goes on top of that IC. Now this particular audio IC is uh, quite special. In fact, uh, it's special because, well, I've never seen an audio IC like this, which is actually coupled to another output transformer. Normally the ICs are, uh, have a direct coupling with the uh, speaker. But here it goes through an output transformer. So much like the earlier push-pull output uh, stages, which involved uh, the you know input-output transformers. So this is uh, somewhat peculiar. The thirteen. Uh, um, 29 HA 30, 1329 is the IC. It's an Hitachi IC. It's about 2.5 watts uh, output 
and uh, takes a fair amount of current. So I'm going to refit uh, this back and um, and then I'll see um, if there is any further change to this. Perhaps I'll recap some of these uh, capacitors as well. These are the capacitors which I have removed. Some of them, uh, in fact, one was almost dead. The other, the ESR is pretty high and the capacities have also changed. So there is a, there is a probability that some of these capacitors are also, uh, you know, obviously it's a set which is pretty old, more than 30, 30 or years old, maybe around 40 years old. So I'll be in fact recapping them without wasting unnecessary uh, time and uh, to check each one of them it's better to especially the uh, the one which was damaged here or rather uh, which was dead was the 100 microfarad which had a capacity of around 30 pf which i measured on the esr meter so um, yes so I, I'll also be trying to change the capacitors around the uh, RFIC. The RFIC is a UPC 1018C, which of course is a very obsolete IC. Hard to get, but the FM portion, as I mentioned, is functioning. So there is a problem. Um, maybe in the uh, AM portion over here. So it's better to change these capacitors as well. schemes of the central government, several development initiatives have been implemented. These are construction of roads, installation of mobile towers, skill development, improving network of banks and post offices, health and education facilities. In Jammu and Kashmir, three terrorists were killed.